Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of It's Your Seasons Out Life. This is the Living Well series podcast. And I'm so excited about today's interview with a local author, Dustin Clutterbuck. Um, he has done a lot of things, and now he's writing motivational books. And this particular book is called, get a load of this, How to Stop Being a Lazy F and How to Get S Done, and I'm going to let you fill in the blanks. But, you know, honestly, at first, I didn't think this book was going to be a fit. I had not read the book, listened, the more the content resonated with me, even at my age. And as an avid reader of anything from Dale Carnegie and Tim Ferriss and Stephen Covey to John Cotter on change management, it was like reliving these thought leaders, bringing motivational and academic experts into the real world of living well. And wow, Dustin is taking it to a new level. So really, how do we get up every day and push through the lazy, which is all part of us? Let's be realistic. We're all lazy at some point. That's cool. But is it preventing us from being our best self? And we're going to hear today to ask pick Dustin's brain on how we can get S done. So I'm just some caveats. There are some expletives, but we're just going to F and S them. So don't be alarmed and we can always go back and delete them. But honestly, in the book, there aren't that many. So just be aware of that. But I want to introduce you to Dustin Clutterbuck, the author. And we're just going to get started, Dustin, with, you know, welcome and then give us your background because it's super okay. interesting. And I feel like that is leading you into what wrote the, how wrote this book. Well, Lisa, I want to thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um, it's a real thrill. I haven't been on a pack podcast in a long time. Um, this book um, was written by actually four people. Um, it was mainly my idea. Um, that's why the book has a different name, a different author, Dustin Spaulding. So this this book started um, because, well, post-pandemic, I noticed a lot of my friends and family just getting stuck in that lazy routine. You know, it was really hard to go back to work post-pandemic. A lot of people were using, you know, convenient apps like DoorDash and Uber Eats and playing video games and sitting on the couch and just not getting outdoors and doing things and achieving goals in their lives. And um, I also had some family members pass away of cancer. And um, two of my family members, they could have prevented their cancer probably from being more active and just being more proactive about their lives. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I think you start out well with the book. It's you, you start with this tough love, but maybe it's not for everyone. I think you do give some latitude for that. But for most of us, we could always use a good kick in the pants. I know when I read the book, I was like, I'm getting a good kick in the pants at my age. We're going to start fresh in 2024 and keep going. So, yeah, the pandemic did kind of kick us in the pants a little bit in one way. And then, but uh, I, I will tell you, when I read the book, I thought, well, it's really speaking to me, too. I need a good swift kick in the pants to kind of get going again. And certainly in your life, uh, some of your back history, you've done some really exciting things, too. So you're ultra motivated and have a multifaceted life. Tell us a little bit about about your back history a little bit before you became an author. So I have a background in audiovisual. I was a stage and sound technician for years. Um, I've worked for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. I worked for Casino Arizona and Scottsdale, did impersonator shows. I've done conferences. Um, when I first moved to Fort Collins, I uh, was one of the main sound guys at the Lincoln Center. Um, one day I decided that I was a little burned out doing sound and lights and staying up late. And that career was very feast or famine. So I decided one day just to walk into IBM City College and decided to be, become a licensed massage therapist because I'm pr pretty good with my hands. Um, and so, I, you know, as far as the book goes, you know, there's, there's a lot of self-help books. You have like Dr. Wayne Dyer and you have Tony Robbins. And, and these books are very kind and they have their purpose too. I believe that, um, you know, some people get motivated off that, you know, uh, kindness and kindness motivation, I call it. This is tough love. Some people need that 
drill sergeant. They need a good swift kick in, kick in the butt, you know, to, mm-hmm. to move. And it's really, this book is targeted towards people that it, it's really at the point of life and death. Like you're going to ruin your life being lazy. Mm-hmm. You're going to ruin your relationships by being lazy. You're going to lose your job, your whole livelihood by sitting around and playing video games, using drugs and alcohol, just sitting around and just not doing anything um, can really destroy your life and actually cause illness and death. And so this book is motivating those people that are at their last wits. They just don't know what else to do, or it's for the family members and the friends that are trying to get their friends and their family members motivated in more of a drill sergeant type of way. I grew up, my, my stepdad, he was, he was that drill sergeant type father. He was a Vietnam vet. And so I got very used to being motivated when I wasn't motivated by loud yelling <laughs> and <laughs> move your butt, get out of bed and make that bed before I come home, get the dishes done, things like that. So that's, that's kind of like the theme, the, vo- the, the, the voice of the book that's that's pretty much what it is we did hire a guy who sound like george carlin we thought it, we were gonna throw a little bit of humor in the um voiceover for the audible book but that's really the theme if you think about say uh you and your husband right your your house is on fire are you both going to sit there and talk nicely to each other say hey let's gather up the bags and all the important files and get out of the house no you're not going to do that you're going to say you know move your butt let's get out of the house grab the pets you know and that's really the theme of the book is you need to do something you 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 just have to do something um i find that the best way to start doing something and to be motivated is to eliminate distractions. So if you're into playing video games, if you're into, you know, apps on your phone, get rid of them. Get rid of those games on your phone. Get rid of those video games. Literally remove that PlayStation out of your house. If you're if drugs and alcohol are a problem, then re- eliminate all the drugs and alcohol out of your house. Stop going to the, you know, marijuana is legal. In Colorado, stop going to the dispensary. If you need support, you know, go to support groups to help you with that motivation. Um, try to su- get friends and family that are very supportive of your growth and then let go of those friends and those family members that don't support your growth. Maybe you're being influenced by people that are playing video games or using drugs and alcohol or being very negative. I hate to say it, but get those people out of your life. You can love them from a distance, but it's very important to remove all the distractions so you can focus on your goals, being healthy, career goals, or relationships. And I, and I like your writing style very much. So you call it a drill sergeant. I call it like the uncle that's really trying to get you back on track. It has a very paternalistic style, but it is direct. It, it, there's not a lot of fluff. It's a short book. And you give lots of tools and structure on how to navigate through seven or eight different areas of what you can do to get back on track. And one of them is being around the right people. Um, And I also appreciate that at the beginning, you do give some caveats to those distractions and things that are that are preventing you from moving forward, whether it's trauma or therapy or substance abuse, that there, there are those that you do do require some outside assistance, but in all essence, move forward and find help and, and change your surroundings. You, you start with motivation, hang-ups, barriers, maybe you might call those in the change management world. I really, I really liked that you, you gave that nod to really kind of what do we know about laziness, the overlooked impact of past experiences. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so you're nodding to them, but also I think would, how would you share what you're doing? For me as a reader, I'm going, 
you're giving a nod to it and you're saying these are things that can impact because you did quite a bit of research for this book. In fact, I'm just going to pivot for just a moment and have you talk about the research that you did to write this. You didn't just kind of sit there and the four of you kind of off the cuff this. You've got pretty good references in the book. So tell us a little bit about that. Our main influence for the book was probably something that wasn't mentioned in the book, but David Goggins. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you've heard of him. Uh, He was a guy who was overweight, um, extremely lazy, um, failed time and time again um, in the Navy SEALs. And that really, there's a lot of references to other books in there, but that was the, that was kind of our, a lot of us read his book and were driven by his experiences. So we wanted to have a bit of the same theme. Mm-hmm. Um, the group of people I wrote the book with, they did a lot more research than I did. I was the guy that kept all us on track through the writing process. So you address a lot of challenges for failure to motivate up front and kind of get those out of the way. And then the next is really kind of moving into, I know you call it drill sergeant, but self-discipline is is a huge piece of trying to change and manage and change your own behavior. So I'm, I'm looking at them now again as, and, you know, on the screen of, you know, developing awareness, this whole self-awareness and, and, learn, and self-learning. You know, what are some pieces and nuggets you want people to, to take away from the book from that perspective well in in chapter in chapter three we talk about failure is motivation and when you when you go through something very tragic or you fail at something there's i think for most people there's this there's this gap of of time and where it might you might consider it to be laziness but it's almost like you're resetting your mind and like refocusing and I think going through something tragic or failing at something, you take a step back and you say, okay, how can I approach this better? How can I succeed? Maybe I'm overthinking things. Maybe my goal is too grandioso. It's too big. How can I step back? Um, but have you ever noticed that when something bad happens to you that you or we tend to just most of us if we're in the right state of mind we we push through it and we actually work harder it's it's almost human nature it's a survival instinct that kicks in for us to just move and unfortunately there's some people that just give up and Mm -hmm. that that giving up is you know laziness so in in chapter three we kind of look at the different scenarios of ways we can motivate ourselves, motivate ourselves through failure, loss, um, depression, anxiety, trauma. And I think it's really good to take these these negative aspects of just human life and take them for what they are, but then also use them as a tool to motivate ourselves. We talk about trauma and and how to build resilience. Um, And and some people go through these, you know, whatever events in life, they're they're negative or sad events. And some people, again, you know, moving forward, either kind of fall back on those or they become more resilient. And, and, And that's, I think there's a huge overarching piece in this book of just, you know, building some resilience through the self-discipline, through working through the tasks in chapter five to get your S done. It's very right. structured and and I really appreciated that. It's quick, it's an easy read, but it is motivating. It's like it, there's not a lot of fluff, although you do, I think, go through very a good, um, you parse out uh, what we can learn about laziness, what it is in regards to procrastination or dis- or distractors and things that can affect it, our past. Uh, certainly we are a product of our past, but that doesn't mean that's who we have to be, right? I think that's the purpose of the book. Yeah, yeah I think your past, you can either let your, whatever your past is motivate you or, or bring you down. It's really all about the, the energy and the thoughts that you have right now to motivate yourself. A lot of, unfortunately, a lot of people blame 
their lives on how they grew up. Parents did the, didn't do this. My teachers didn't do that. And that, you know, it's a form of lazy thinking. When you become an adult, you take responsibility and accountability for what you're doing now. And I think one thing that motivates me personally is in life is just experiences. I'm not really motivated so much by finances or social interaction so much, but mainly just experiencing all that life can offer using using my brain and to its full potential, just going out there and learning everything that I can. As far as like motivation goes, I guess the best example I could use from my own experiences in, in 2016, I rode my bicycle from Fort Collins, Colorado to Daytona Beach, Florida to raise money for cancer awareness. And, you know, that that bicycle ride took Oh, man, it took like two years to plan. And one book that really motivated me was a book called Riding Home from Siberia, written by Rob Lillwall. He rode from uh, Siberia all the way back to the UK, and it took him about three years to do it. And I read that book, and it really motivated me. And then at the time, I didn't really have a car. Um, I was struggling with my finances, struggling with myself, and I had to ride my bike to school. I was going to massage therapy school at the time, so I was riding my bike in the winter time. And that struggle that at first I didn't really like riding my bike. I didn't. It was really tough traffic, and it was cold. I had to deal with the weather. I had to deal with time. I was late places because I was on my bicycle. And then one day I just read that book and it really motivated me. I'm like, I could do this. This is something I want to do. I want to ride my bike across the United States. Wow. And so hmm. I um, started just speaking it out loud. I used to, I, I used, I, I talked to my friends and my family. I'm going to ride my bike across the United States. And people thought I was crazy. People thought I was insane. People thought I was stupid. People thought, and, you know, you could look at that and say, well, that might bring you down and you might, you know, that might change my mind if somebody's being negative about it. And all the negative people that were negative about my idea, I just, you know, stayed away from them and I didn't tell them my idea. But all the people that were surrounding me that were positive about what I wanted to do, they helped me be motivated and they a lot of times asked me questions about it. Oh, are you still running across the country? And so it took two years of planning. And um, the last the last 12 months before I went, I remember waking up every single day on a whiteboard and counting down the days till I left in September. And every day, every day, you know, just count down the days. So I think you just got to, as far as motivation, whatever you want to do in life, you just have to wake up every single morning and remind you remind yourself what your purpose is whether that's a new career a new relationship doing bucket list experience like i did just you have to wake up every single day and you have to remind yourself your purpose and you have to eliminate all distractions to get to whatever you want to achieve you you have to just go straight ahead get rid of the people the drugs and alcohol, the bad influences, turn off the TV, and you just have to narrow your vision down to what you want to achieve. So I'm fascinated by biking across the country because that's just not something everybody does all at one time. And so were you responding to a wake-up call of yourself or what inspired you to want to bike across? I mean, I took two as a plan, but what really inspired you to go and... What was the purpose? What inspired you to go do that ride? That or well, the book that I read, um, mm -hmm. Riding Home mm -hmm. from Siberia, that really inspired mm -hmm. me. Um, that mm -hmm. was one of the books that really made me so enthusiastic after reading that about biking. A lot of it was, well, if I go on this bike tour, on this bike ride, and I get through it, then I can get through anything in life mm. that comes my way. I, I, you know, I read the book. 
and there was some hard moments in that book he wrote and so i thought hey you know if i go on this bike tour i'm gonna push myself past my comfort zone past my limitations and then the the rest of life is just gonna be a walk in the park and so and at the time I was I was struggling. I was going to school. I was working, just transition transitioning careers. My finances were messed up. My relationships weren't great, and um, just going to school changed my perception on life as well. It changed my life completely. Um, even even the school got behind me on on the tour. Um, they helped me rally students behind it i became kind of an influencer a motivational speaker with the school i got the american cancer uh, society to get involved um, i actually interviewed rob lil wall i had a podcast that i was doing at the time no longer exists i don't i don't even know where that recording is <laughs> mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. it was definitely motivated as far as the cancer portion of fundraising, that was because that was around the time a lot of my family was being diagnosed with cancer. Um, my grandfather and my grandmother, and then my my mother had breast cancer. She survived it, but that was about the time that was going on in my life. So there's a lot of hard things going on in my life at the time. Um, I, I fell in love bicycling. I just rode my bike constantly and I did small rides. I did rides to Cheyenne, uh, rode my bike to Laramie, uh, Denver, uh, just to train. And uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, it was just one of those experiences, you know, you, you just, you feel it, you feel it in your soul and your bones. And you, you, and I think if you don't, if, if you don't feel, I think it comes with, if you don't really feel something in your soul that that's something you really want to do, you probably shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it if you're trying to, you know, for social status or anything like that. You should really feel in your soul that whatever you're going to achieve, whether it's a bucket list thing, a career relationship, you just really need to feel it in your in your soul that that's your purpose that you're calling or it's just i don't think it's going to work out yeah so you you talk about the one thing and and the soul so one thing you one thing that you bring up in the chapters is really exploring and trying new things and and there's a lot of gurus and speakers and thought leaders that get out and say, oh, just find that one thing that really resonates with you. But in finding that one thing, it does take uh, just experimenting, like you said, experiencing life to to really find out what you're good at. And maybe, or you might be good at multiples of things. Look at you, look at everything that you've done so far. Totally fascinated by that bike ride. Just some of the things about being, I think, a lazy of where we can go also in the future and why this is important is just think about where we are in 2024. We've got AI, possibly self-driving cars. Is there potential that, you know, we can get even lazier because there's going to be easier and easier ways to live life? But how, how do we stay motivated so that we have a really full life? So what chapter really resonates with you the most, I think? Um, I'll say chapter three because talk about just a lot of the issues that make us lazy talk about trauma trauma can make us feel very weak emotional stuff that we, we're holding on to you know I've, I've i've had many times in my life where i've had some traumatic things happen to me and you just don't want to get out of bed and i get it i think because that, i mean th those are those are real things those are real things whether that's losing a loved one or losing your job or whatever it may be, it, trauma, violence, verbal aggression from somebody, um, those things can make us lazy. It's okay to acknowledge these things and maybe have like a, a day or two of like, I need to reset my mind or whatever. But the problem is, is when it, when it continues, when it's, it's like weeks and months and 
even years. And we're constantly using that trauma as like an excuse not to do something, not to achieve our goals. And I think there's a time and a place where you need to just be like, okay, enough is enough. I, I, I'm, I'm falling deep in this rabbit hole and I need to get out of it. I'm not going to achieve any of my goals. And I know sometimes you can't keep up the motivation. Sometimes we lose motivation. But if you lose motivation, maybe that direction, that path isn't isn't really right for you. But I definitely say uh, chapter three is a, is a favorite of mine. Yeah. And I think you, you bring a lot into this of, you know, of experiencing trauma, whether it's a divorce or losing family members, or even sometimes trauma can be as simple as just keeping memories of the past of, well, somebody picked on me. And so you, you bury that somewhere in your, in your file cabinet of the brain, but then that's kind of where your comfort zone will reside. And one of my favorite memes I used to use a lot was life, and it's out there, it's not one I made up, is, uh, you know, life begins outside your comfort zone. Right. And to to remove those distractions, as you call it, is really getting yourself out of your comfort zone. And it's going to be uncomfortable for a while, but it, it's, uh, it's worth doing, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's only growth once you step out of your comfort zone, you're just growing. And one of the hardest things that most adults have is public speaking. That's one of the number one fears that adults have, even children. And I use that as an example because most people have to do public speaking. It's just part of life. And uh -huh. once you, you know, your first time going up on stage or playing music or whatever it may be, I'm bringing that up because I actually play music too. You know, you go to open mic and you play, you might be a little nervous, but it's mm -hmm. that rush and you, and whether it's it could be playing music, it could be public speaking, it could be a changing a career. It's uncomfortable. You're, you're, you're so comfortable once you, once you start learning how to do it. And then you have that time, that moment where you do it and you step out of your comfort zone you feel so good. It's that feeling that we want after we do it. It's also the journey of it. The old saying goes, life's a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you have that journey of learning and growth. And once you get done public speaking or get done changing your career, then you build the confidence in yourself to go on and do other things as well. And you just you just keep on going and you keep on experiencing life. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I just love this book. And I'm not just really saying that because, as I said at the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know that title. I don't know what we can yeah, do with a, that. You know? <laughs> I, th I think the title, I think mm -hmm. the title turns a lot of people off. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the cover also does, too. But again, some people need that tough yeah. love and some and some people don't. And yeah. so... This is not written for the people who don't. This is written for the people that do. And I haven't I haven't quoted a lot of the book because mm -hmm. I really want people to read it. So I'm I'm letting listeners listen to it for free. So if you want to listen to it for free, it's for free on my YouTube channel, Dustin Clutterbook. Just type in search on YouTube and my mm -hmm. channel should pop up. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of the titles are like this book was banned from social media because it was. I Oh, tell us this more. Book, this book was banned from Facebook. It got banned from the Nextdoor app. Mm -hmm. um, I had to camouflage the book, so to speak. I had to mm -hmm. give it a clickbait title. <laughs> I used <laughs> the banning. This, this. Why was this book banned from Facebook? Why was this book banned from social media? And I hate to say this too, but I just don't think a lot of people want to hear it. I, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people want to hear the truth why mm -hmm. people are lazy or why they're mm -hmm. lazy or why mm -hmm. our society is lazy. Because once you hear the truth, that means you have to look at yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and you have to change. You know, lazy is not exactly a word we want to describe ourselves, except after I read this book, there were times I'm like, you know, I'm really just kind of being lazy. I just need, it is what it is. I just need to go take care of this. It's just, it's funny. It's not a word that we just, 
it, it has so many connotations and it's like nobody it, it's rarely kind of used anymore i think because we use other ways of describing lazy habits you know mm-hmm. <laughs> or we couch it or we soften it and we make excuses but to achieve personal accountability, you just, and that's a, I'm a strong one on that one. I used to teach that one. And uh, you, it, you just, it's, you, you got to give up lazy. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's a time, there's a time and a place to be lazy. I'm a massage yeah, therapist sure. and be lazy getting a massage. Be mm-hmm. lazy while you're, you're mm-hmm. sleeping at night. There's, there's time, be lazy when you're sick. You're sick. Mm-hmm. Be lazy, mm-hmm. uh, but there's right. there's a time and a place for that. Mm-hmm. The the issue is we we like going back to our culture. It's 2024, and we have all these apps, DoorDash and Uber Eats, and all these games, and you can order anything you want on your phone. You can literally, and people are working from home too. My girlfriend, she's an environmental scientist. She works from home half the time. There's people that don't leave their homes. They, they sit inside all day long, order food, they, they, they don't work out, they play video games. And, and this is actually creating a culture of illness and disease. And, and I'm talking diabetes and mental illness. People are losing their social skills. I've noticed it just post-pandemic. People don't smile at each other anymore. People don't shake hands anymore. People don't I can go to the gym, I can go in the sauna, and pre-pandemic, people talk to each other and have conversations with each other. I've noticed that when people are in public now, people don't have conversations that much. I mean, it's it happens once in a blue moon, but for the most part, we're getting lazy in our interactions, we're getting lazy with our transportation, we're getting lazy with how we eat food our finances. And I think the best way to overcome all that is again, to step out of your comfort zone, to be, to be aware of that and get rid of all the distractions, all the unhealthy distractions. People is they rather have their entertainment. God forbid they get rid of their entertainment. We are just bombarded with entertainment and distractions and just easy convenience. When I hear convenience, I automatically think lazy. So I was just thinking about loneliness. You brought up a really good, I had heard some data on the prevalence of loneliness and social isolation, you know, since the pandemic, but also because as we get more, you know, we use more technology, we, we kind of get it brain addicted to that and think that that's some type of an interaction when it really, it's not going to get you moving forward in your life and being, su- mm-hmm. you know, whatever success looks like. So your point about loneliness and social isolation is, 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 is very, true i was trying to look up some data really quick but now overall it's increasing and we do that because uh, we have certainly we do tend to get lazy and especially pandemic i agree with you on that one um, and, and how we were all trying to kind of what i call resurrect in 2022 and 23 right. on trying to think about how realizing maybe i have gotten a little lazy or maybe i have i don't feel as motivated to go out and I can choose maybe who I want to go visit with or what kind of people I want to be with. And maybe I don't want to be with anybody, but you know, we're, we're social animals. Humans are social beings and and we need that. And that's how we, you know, we learn from each other and and can improve and have a high quality life. Um, I love your chapter seven too, because you say it's tough love, but, and, and it's, but there's also a lot about self-love, self-care, self-acceptance. I don't want to give it all away because it's written so well. I'm to tell everyone it, it really is a book you need to read and to listen to because it's just there's just so much meat there in a very 112 pages. <laughs> yeah, it's a it gets right down to the point. I there's one I got to bring up something about self-development books is we all have our story and a lot of the self-help books I've discovered. It's great to hear everybody's story, but we all we all know what our stories are. Everybody's had a struggle. Everybody's had trauma. Lots of people have, have had these things happen. And um, I guess my biggest pet peeve and why I wrote this book, and it's different than most, is it doesn't, the 
I'm not going to explain to you my story and go through it in the book and then tell you how to do it. I'm just going to tell you <laughs> to stop being a lazy. If you know, a lot of people say, you know, the economy is bad and inflation and all that stuff that could, you know, that's the case too. But I also look at some of the generations that are coming up and they don't want to work. They don't want to work. They don't want to work hard. They, they do want convenience. And I think that does affect the economy when you have a lazy society your economy your economy is going to be junk and Mm -hmm. i think that's a lot of the issue too in our in our world is that we have this i'm mainly talking about america we we have this culture of instant gratification i can i can get anything i want by pushing something on my phone or playing a video game or and get this instant gratification i don't want to go to work i've experienced a lot of younger generations and you know they're constantly calling out sick they're constantly making excuses why they can't do something and i i grew up i'm not that old but i grew up where you know if you're you got a little sniffle (laughs) you got to go to work it doesn't it doesn't matter if you if your stomach hurts and you're not throwing up you got to go to work you have to work and you have to push yourself through it and we need to start teaching people to it's mind over matter like it's not always it's not always going to be a struggle but it's going to continue to be a struggle if you're you know lazy and you're backing out of things just because you slightly don't feel good or you have a little sniffle or you had somebody yelled at you you know you have to have thick skin and just move forward in life if you want to achieve your goals and your dreams. So th- that's a great point. And I think about generations. So I'm a little bit older than you and I have a 97 year old father-in-law and I was uh, really kind of mapping through his life and just thinking how much he did in the fifties to, um, to provide for his family and be, you know, and, and to get his master's and work on his PhD in p- what I call podunk collar, Nebraska, but just how hard that generation. And, 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 and I think there is some generation too, because over this, these last, you know, centuries, certainly things have gotten easier, more accessible. It's made us kind of lazy because we, you know, we can go to school online now. There, everything is so accessible. There really should not be any reason why not to do something. And uh, I, I, I just find the whole, it's all the things that you need are at, at your doorstep. It's, it's, uh, and this book is not like a you go you you go girl or guy or they or whatever you know it's it's not a you go book it is a very practical tips very step by step process that you've created to help people move forward it's a it's a reality check really like i said before it it will help if you read the book it will definitely help you get thicker skin forward in life and it's it's just sort of reality check i think most people need to hear yeah and and like i said i don't i i I know that it was written for a particular audience but it really is a really fast good read for anyone because there are such it's just so practical and i don't want to i don't want to i don't even want to read a chapter or read part of a chapter because it's it's just so well done and I, I do want people to listen to it and to read it and to hopefully they can take these nuggets these these aren't even nuggets like i think if you follow the book and and start implementing some of these tips that you have in here it you should see results so so one well, of well, the book is the book is for free on my youtube page like i said if you wanted to purchase it it's available on audible and kindle on amazon as well so my closing thought is, and I don't know why, when you read something, some, always there's always a nugget. So my nugget that I took home with me is, because all this takes time. There's no miracle about this. It's not going to happen overnight, right? Yes. And and you have set out a nice, and there's no timeline on this. You can take this and, and if you're you know going to be a, a, a transformational change person, start working on it now and over the next 30 days and see where you are. And then some people are slow adopters and it just takes more time. We know that. 
But you wrote something, and I'm just going to attribute it to you because I think it was from you, because you really do write beautifully. Or whoever your group, whoever did the final edits, it's really, it's concise, but it's very well written. Time is a place where you get to see who you really are. And I, I don't know, I just loved that <laughs> because it's going to take time and it's not going to happen overnight. And, but given time, is, time is really the place. I loved that juxtaposition of language. And I think it really speaks about the book is, is give yourself time and, and see who you can become. So what final thoughts would you like to leave the audience Dustin? Well, going back to that, I think time, you know, time will teach you if you're disciplined or you're not. A lot of us as adults, we look at our lives and, and we're like, oh, I'm not I'm not where I wanted to be. You know, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I've had that multiple times in my lifetime where I'm, I'm, I'm not quite where I thought I was going to be. And and then you kind of look at how disciplined you are. Am I am I be, am I is my life structured enough? Am I disciplined enough? I think that's where that comes from. Yeah, this book is really going to change people's lives. And I was just going to, um, if you wouldn't mind, I was just going to read some of the reviews on the book. Is that is that okay? Sure. I always like to read those because we've had a few new ones. So far, we've had about nine reviews of the book. And this comes directly off of Amazon. One of the reviews says stopping a lazy FA is an absolute game changer. This motivational handbook friend is no nonsense, straightforward shooting guide that's guaranteed to kick the procrastination to the curb and light a fire under your dreams. From the moment I started reading, I was hooked. The author's candid, no hold, bearing approach to refreshing is refreshing and relatable. They understand the struggles we all face when it comes to motivation and pro productivity, and they deliver practical strategies to overcome those barriers. That's just a few of them. A lot of great reviews there. It's a really great book. I'm very enthusiastic about it, Lisa. really appreciate you uh, having me on today. Oh, I'm just thrilled. I, like I said, I'm like, oh, I don't know, but I'm like, oh, yeah, I really want to talk <laughs> about a personal accountability. <laughs> It's a, it's something that's just near and dear to my heart, and I think there are ways to navigate through it so that we can all just live well. How about that? We can all have Definitely. the best life that we can. I think as far as accountability goes, I I'm, this is a message I'm trying to get out there. Pick somebody in your life that is a positive influence in your life, and they will help you be accountable for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think having a a mentor type individual, someone who can really help you stay the course is huge. And I I think that's very underappreciated. I don't know how many people actually have though these days is someone who can really help you be accountable and not someone that just says, I'm going to agree with everything that you say. I think it's important Mm -hmm. to have that, that a strong role model and someone who can, you can, who can mentor you through. I mean, life's not, not always a, you know, easy and and but having someone personal mentor professional mentor just people that you can look up to and not just admire but really just you know have a good conversation with is is huge i think it's a very underappreciated relationship that's out there and like you said the more isolated we get the less we have and then kind of the more lazy we get so a good mentor will tell you what you don't want to hear but you you need to hear it (laughs) <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I so appreciate you taking the time to discuss your your book. I just, I love it. I hope other people will go out and it's free. I mean, this is like, this is free stuff, y'all. You can go out and, and, and get some motivation today to really, you know, change the trajectory of your life. If you're not happy with where you're at, well, let's 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 make a change on that. And, I, and you're, you're here to help them. So I really appreciate you being with me today. Well, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you having me on again. Oh, and then uh, one more thing. Uh, let's uh, tell them where they can find you. How about that? I have a website. It's uh, DustinClutterbuck.com. Again, I'm a massage therapist, so if you if you would like to book a massage with me, you, you can do that there as well. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I On that YouTube channel, I have the free uh, Stopping a Lazy <laughs> all seven chapters you can listen to um i'm on tiktok i'm on instagram so i'm kind of everywhere 
I'm not on Facebook. And let's just talk about speaking. I think this is a wonderful topic and people are always looking for motivational speakers. So how can they reach out to you for a speaking engagement or maybe even coaching? I think you're doing that as well. Yeah. So you can email me at dustinmichaelmedia at gmail.com or you can visit my website. I speak about wellness and motivation as well. I talk a lot about my bicycle tour experience down to Florida. Uh, So those are a lot of the topics I discuss as well as I'm really passionate right now specifically about teaching people self-massage using correct tools like lacrosse balls, theracanes, and things like that they could do at home. And that's very generous of you because you could be just massaging them yourself, but it's good that you're teaching people also to do that self-care at home. So this will all be in the show notes at the bottom. And it's been a great interview. I appreciate it. And I hope... I hope people run out and, or at least put their ear pods on and go to YouTube and find this and, and, and get some nuggets to get started today. Yeah. And if you, if you, the listeners out there like the book, um, please share it with your friends and your family that, that really need it. It's something to keep in your toolbox for people that maybe just read this. You'll get some nuggets. Okay. You'll get, or you'll just get the list of things to do. You get the checkbox, go, go after it. Um, I really encourage people just to have fun with the title and get, get into the book for some good meat and yeah. uh, instruction. Awesome. I appreciate the, the compliments and um, thanks for again for having me on your show and thanks uh, to your audience for listening. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a new tip for living well and celebrating life every day. Give me a shout out with comments or suggestions for future Living Well podcasts. Be sure and check out my website podcast page too with other interviews of awesome guests sharing their love for living well. You can find me at It's Your Season Dot life, or just search Lisa Boson, B-O-E-S-E-N, and of course here on Podbean. So thanks for joining me, and remember, it's always your season to celebrate life at any age.